How's it going everyone? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. Today's video, we are going to be looking into the gray noise sensor. Now, many of you know, I've talked about gray noise a few times on this channel, but if you're not familiar with what gray noise is, it is a honeypot service. Uh, basically what they do is they have uh, all of these honeypots across the entire internet uh, in different countries and such like that with different personas. And I will uh, explain what personas are in a bit. And it reports back to their platform and basically showcasing all the naughty IP addresses on the internet. Today, I'm gonna be showing you all the different naughty IP addresses that actually hit my home network. Now, uh, before I go on, I am part of their VIP community, meaning that I get access to things like this. Uh, if you go to Gray Noise right now, you probably don't have access to it. Uh, this will be coming out in the future, but this is just a taste on what will be available. So I've been running this for about a week now, and I'm currently SSH'd into my, uh, my sensor. And basically what it is, is a one-liner script that you run. So this is the admin interface. So you'll see this little area up here called sensors. Now the setup instructions are fairly easy. Uh, all you need is a sacrificial dedicated uh, Ubuntu Red Hat. I, there's a whole list of different IP, or not IPs, uh, OSs you can run. I'm running all of this on a Raspberry Pi uh, underneath my desk right now. And it's port forwarded uh, to that IP address as well as other ports as well. And it's on the internet. So you could see my home IP address, which will definitely be redacted since this is a honeypot. You could see the persona that I'm running on it is big IP, uh, which is an F5. I think it's not a net scaler. It's a load balancer um, or a VIP. I think you would also call it. Uh, and it's facing the internet with a login prompt. Um and it has everything associated with an actual uh, F5 Big IP host. So it has the favicon, the login prompt, the whole shebang, um, and all that. Now, there is one thing it does not do currently, which I would like for them to, to kind of build into a little bit more, is outside of just the login screen, being able for someone to interact with that host and see what it's able to do. Um, now... Before I dig into this a little bit more, there might be some glaring questions as like the security of this. Why are you doing this on your home network? Are, do you have like any VLANs or anything like that? So the security risks with this is, well, really what you make it. So the, uh, the Raspberry Pi I have underneath my desk that is running this, basically the way that the script works is it only communicates with gray noises uh, network. So when you do get these attacks that have these different payloads associated with them to run various bash scripts, which we will certainly dig into in this video, anything outside of gray noises, allow listed hosts will just get dropped. So there is no exfiltration, no connection going back. It is only ingress and no egress. So with that, this is a permanent thing. I'm sure you could tweak their bootstrap shell script a little bit so you could do things like apt update and all that. Uh, however, that is also another thing. You are going to be running uh, eventually a vulnerable system. So this Raspberry Pi, I can't uh, update it using the like default package manager. I could probably throw a USB drive into it and get its updates that way, but... I, I, you would probably have to tweak it a little bit so you could just, you know, reach out to Ubuntu and get those updates. Um, and then is it VLAN? No, I don't need it VLAN. There's no egress. They can't do anything on this host. It is just simply an Apache server loading up an HTML page and there's nothing to it. Um, that's what this persona is. So eventually it would be nice if they could get a system where you could deploy like a almost a realistic, like like almost like an entire system that is like a big IP or, you know, XYZ product. But I'm sure there might be some copyright concerns with that. Uh, so just as it is, I'll show you what this looks like. So I'll copy my, you know, public facing IP address and load it up. Like this is what it looks like. This is what my honeypot looks like. Simple as that. So um, let's dig into it a little bit more. So I only have one sensor set up right now and you can set up multiple servers if you like. On the top up here, it has just the basic um, 
script you run. It's a bash script. It, it calls out to gray noise. It downloads uh, your workspace and all of that. And basically it starts phoning home to gray noise. So um, when you run that boot, bootstrap script, it checks, it, it does basically like checks like which OS you're on, kernel version uh, and all that. And it, it does install like some different IP table uh, or an IP table configuration script to basically block out egress except to gray noise and all that. Um, and then it has a heartbeat. I don't know what the heartbeat is. I'm guessing it's every few minutes, but basically it's just phoning home. Hey, I'm still alive. Like if I was to unplug the, uh, the raspberry Pi right now, which I, I will do, we'll keep this screen up. Let's see. Let's see how fast this heartbeat is. I unplug the cat six cable and it is in gray noises eyes offline right now. Let's hit reload. It'd probably still say online. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't expect it to be that instant. So we're, we're just doing a sanity check. Uh, what? I unplug this at, let's call it 512. Let's just keep refreshing this page. I'm curious how fast this heartbeat is. So yeah, it's, it's offline right now. I'll give it five minutes. I think that's like a reasonable time. So you have this going. What's the purpose of all of this? Well, it's capturing pretty much anything you would get if you run something like TCP dump. I'm not gonna beat around the bush and say it's anything different than TCP dump. The only thing that it does differently is the personas uh, and the ease of changing in, you know, changing those personas. Also, uh, the other thing I've noticed is if you go to like Data Explorer, this is where you can manage the actual information that you get off the sensor. So you do get a PCAP, you can, you know, export certain sensors. So if I had multiple, I can choose the one in here, the time range and all of that, and you can export the PCAP. So if we were to download this one right here, it gives you a zip file. So you can see that I ran multiple personas. So I have Big IP, Avanti, Secure Connect, and Microsoft Exchange. And inside of that is just that PCAP file. You can do whatever you want with that. You can go into Wireshark and analyze that traffic. Now, one thing I do like about that is it removes all RFC 1918 um, information. So uh, local network traffic like, hey, uh, ARP, like ARP requests and all that is removed from that PCAP file um, and all that. So what we can do is like we have that PCAP file. We can just go into here, go to analysis and uh, take a look at, I don't know, big IP. Let's just take a look at this guy right here and hit analyze. This is outside of the sensor, uh, by the way. Uh, so I would like to see this kind of integrated into the sensor profile itself or the sensor tab, just so you don't have to export and then re upload back. Um, but basically this is everything that this sensor has captured since I started up uh, at least the persona for big IP. So all of these different IP addresses, you can see ones in here that have an unknown attribution to them. So it's gray noise is unable to say, okay, this is, you know, benign, this is malicious or anything like that. So we have all of these in here and you can click on them and it takes you to their visualizer. So this is everything that gray noise has detected. There's certain IPs in here that Grainways might not have detected in the past, and that's where things get a little interesting. Uh, but we can see that, you know, we have some malicious traffic, of course. It's the internet, you know. It happens. Uh, this is live. This is live. There we go. I was, I was clicking here, but it wasn't. I had to click up here. So malicious. So we have all these different naughty IP addresses right here. Um Clicking on any of them, again, takes you back to their visualizer, like ports scanned and all that. But this is just on gray noise. Like this is on their site. I want to get some more in-depth information as far as what my sensors are detecting. And that's where the SIFT comes into place. And I don't know what SIFT stands for, but basically it, it takes what we were just looking at and putting some context behind it, which is kind of nice. And it also gives you access to that payload. So... This one right here, we have a remote bash script ex execution via uh, a post request. So clicking on this, we can see, okay, they posted out to management TM util bash. So they are going through, uh, you know, this uh, pathway right here. You can see that they were trying to do a uh, 
F5 exploitation. So this is, I, I didn't even look at this before this video. So this was like targeted to an F, F5 system, which I'm running. Um, so F5 auth token and all that. And then their command right here. So they were looking to reach out to their C2 server for this shell script and then download this other shell script right here and then run it. Um, now, obviously the only way to see like how this works is to download it. We got it. All right. So let's cat this. Let's, oh my Lord. This is a whole thing right here. So I'm actually going to copy this over to Sublime. This is hilarious. Now, obviously, just doing a wget on this does not do anything. I'm not executing this file. So, like, there's nothing crazy about doing this. But there is a few things in here that are catching my eye already that just interest me. So, let's go ahead and load this into Sublime Text. And let's see what file we got here. So... Uh, lovely. We can see a potential country of origin. We have config files, uh, name config JSON goes to dev null. So cron tab. So we are creating a cron task, which basically what that means, it sets a repeat schedule for X, Y, Z things. So, so cron tasks. So for file and config files, uh, we are going to set the, uh, permissions to seven, 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 which is, read, write, execute for all parties involved. So if you, you know, chmod 777 is a great way to, yeah. So so if grep and user, so we're, we're doing some file processing here, uh, some more file processing right here. So file process, file does not contain both user and URL field skipping. So it looks like it's trying to enumerate some uh, user data in here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm unfamiliar with uh, with big IP as far as management goes, but we have like another curl right here. So cron, what is, what, what do all these stars mean like every second? I think that's what that means. Like the stars in a cron task. I think that's every second it can run. So it's, it's continually to reach out to, Grab this bash script, um, grep fxq. So it, it's it's checking some config file on an F5 system, and we're doing some Python right here. Oh my god! So just a simple importing different libraries, uh, doing a HTTP request to font Unix, all that. So yeah, let's actually throw this into um, to chat GPT and get its take on this code. The script performs a variety of tasks related to configuration files, process management, and scheduled tasks. So searches the file system for config JSON and stores their paths in an array called config files. Remove cron jobs, so it removes all cron tasks. Um, fun. Uh, loop through config files. So for each config JSON file, sets the permissions to quad seven or triple seven. Of course, got to have read write and execute access on everything. Checks if user and URL field exists in that file. Uh, if both fields exist, modifies their values. Prints a message indicating whether the file was processed or skipped. Uh, checks for a specific process, checks if a process with the name font Unix is running. If it's running, it prints a message and exits the script. Otherwise it proceeds to the next step, checks the temp file for font Unix and config JSON. Uh, if both exists, exist, it starts a background service and adds a scheduled task. Uh, and then if not, it tries to download these files, uh, from a remote server using wget and curl. But yeah, we have that. That's interesting. Uh, we have unauthorized password change attempt to view this payload. So, okay. So it, it, it's basically, so patch management. So it's going through this, uh, <laughs> it's, you, it's just using like a random basic auth token right there of CVZ. I don't know what that is. And then tries to read, 
tries to authenticate using this password right here. I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, potential RC exploit via outdated big IP platform. Let's take a look at this. So accept text. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I recognize this. So, um, so the TMUI login JSP. This is this is a classic big IP F5 vulnerability. Um, and then brute force attempts with like a WordPress dashboard, like that doesn't really matter to me too much. Like that's just internet noise, but like these top three or this one and this one are like obviously targeted to my system because I'm running that F5 persona. So outside of just like spraying the internet, like there's a few IPs out there that just spray the entire internet and see what shit sticks on the wall. These are went a little bit further. I mean, this could also be just like spray and pray and like they're just trying to exploit every IP and hope that some of them are F5. Could be that. It could be that there was some logic involved with this with fingerprinting and it's like, oh, here's a list of, uh, you know, login pages that prompted big IP. Uh, let's try to run this script against them uh, to hopefully exploit them. Uh, and run various cron tasks on these hosts to maintain persistence and all that. So super fun stuff. Um, it's only been one week. And also, let's check my sensors. It says it's offline, which you can't see right now. But it says it's offline. So I'll plug it back in and the heartbeat should start up almost immediately. Anyways, that is it for this video. Uh, I will keep you all posted about this. This is, you know, secret squirrel stuff, quote unquote. I mean, they've talked about it and uh, all that. So it's not available yet to the public. So uh, there probably will be changes once this goes live um, and all that. Oh, let me just show you the persona thing. I didn't even talk about that. So the persona thing is interesting. So these are all the different personas that you can use on this you know, sensor. So I'm running big IP because that seems to be the hot commodity or a hot commodity, but you can do like a phone system Atlassian Confluence 8.5.1, cPanel, Crush FTP, Big IP, of course, Hikvision camera. That one, that is a great one to get the skids off of Shodan. Hikvision IP cameras, that is how you get them skids on your network. Um, RDP and all that, Avanti, Home Assistant, Plesk, SMB server, Telnet, SSH, all that fun stuff. Anyways, that is it for this video. If y'all enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button with the bell notification enabled so you get notified anytime I post a new video. Uh, after this video, there will be a second video, not related to gray noise, but I do plan on uh, actually have it all written down. I was a judge or a coach at the uh, most recent Trace Labs event. So I'll be making a video just summarizing my experience with all that. And yeah, and if you want to stay connected, I have my Discord link down below. Been running that for quite some time now. Uh, and also wish me luck. I have a physical fitness test tomorrow with a fire department in 24 hours at making this video. So anyways, that is it for this video. Y'all take care. Goodbye. Are we really interested?